Hello and welcome to Microsoft Mechanics Live. In the next 15 minutes on our special episode of How We Built It, we're joined by Walgreens IT Manager and Supply Chain Analytics Architect Ann Cruz to chronicle the approach that she took with her team in their race against time to migrate their mission critical retail inventory system with about 100 terabytes of data from IBM Natiza to Azure SQL Data Warehouse all before their looming end of support deadline. Now we're gonna explore the approaches that they took to migrate to a production ready state within a record three months time and where they're going next. But everybody, please join me in giving a warm welcome to Ann Cruz from Walgreens. Thank you, Jeremy. Glad to be on the show. Thank you. So Walgreens, it's a huge company. It's got a massive footprint. You know, it's got a number of sub-brands. People know things like Boots maybe in the UK. We also uh, have Rite Aid here in the US. Now I know this particular migration effort was really US only, but what type of scale are we actually talking about? So as you know, Walgreens spans both um, pharmacy and retail. Um, our particular migration effort focused on the retail part of our business here in the US. Walgreens have more than 9,000 stores and more than 20 distribution centers nationwide. Their operations are supported by my team, which is responsible for maintaining a mission-critical, large-scale inventory management system called the Merchandising Portal. This application processes, on the average, 17 billion records daily. Every item that we keep in stock has a cost associated to us. This application is critical in ensuring that we have the right inventory at the right quantities in each store. Right, and I can really see how if you get inventory right and do it properly, you're actually saving a lot more costs than just the IT systems potentially, just with the logistics side of the costing alone. So it sounds like it was a really big deal to consider even moving to the cloud at all and moving your systems at all, right? It is. So one big motivating factor for us was the end of life of support of one of the two Natisa boxes that is standing up our, our merchandising portal application. Second, we needed to integrate the data from the right aid acquisition into our infrastructure. And third, we are just running out of space. With appliances, as you've mentioned earlier, you cannot just add another 10 terabytes. You have to buy another 48 terabytes, and you have to pay 20% of annual maintenance costs. Right. It also takes an average of six months from the decision to buy an appliance to standing it up into your data center and wiring it correctly. And that's not going to work for where we are because we only have until June of 2019 before the end of support deadline. As you say, it is actually a race against time. In fact, we set to complete our migration effort to Azure SQL Data Warehouse in just three months. So that's a lot of pressure. Just to put this in perspective, you kind of started around, I think, December or so of last year. You had until June if you wanted to yeah. order a new piece of equipment, but you wanted to get this done into Azure in a couple of months. That's a lot of pressure, I think. Even with all these challenges in mind, you made the decision, in this case, to re-platform. But before we get into kind of how you did it, uh, can you give us an idea of where you're coming from and what your system looked like before? Right, so to tell you guys where we were before, at the center, we had two data warehousing appliances. The first one was dedicated to hosting our Java-based merchandising portal system to ensure that it is highly available. We kept a copy of the system data and diverted all ad hoc queries to our second Netiza server, which handled all of our batch processes. All right, so how many queries then were we handling? It would handle thousands of queries per week, um, around 25 large queries weekly, averaging 20 million rows per query from our business users and um, vendors. The real challenge here is um, keeping the data in sync. About a third of the time, we would see that our stock data is not keeping up to date. So right. to avoid any disruption into batch processes, We'd often terminate query that is running longer than five minutes to manage the workload demand. And it's terrible because you're kind of actually kind of training people not to ask for custom queries, which has an impact on the business yeah. effectively because they want these type of this data and everything to, to work. So what data sources then were feeding into your merchandising system? We had a number of systems feeding into our Netiza warehouse appliance, ranging from our financial database to store inventory, Space planning, forecasting. 
Because of capacity issues over the year, we even brought in Hadoop for our supply chain management for more cost-effective storage of our long-term data for certain batch processes that we do not have capacity for in Itiza. We even use an ETL process to bring the data into our primary merchandising system. Right, and you had a huge capacity and scale issue in this case. Uh, you were really trying to manage the cost of the data volume, lots of the demand on the business for reporting. I think a lot of things that you had to turn away, unfortunately. But what did you end up then with? We lifted and shifted our merchandising portal front end, which is a Java application, onto Azure VMs to avoid any data latency. Mm -hmm. We ended up replacing the Netiza systems with one single source of truth into Azure SQL Data Warehouse connecting to all our legacy systems. One big surprise is the openness of the Azure platform. It integrates with our productivity applications with Office 365 and, of course, identity management with Azure Active Directory, which is really great for our users. Right, and I can see here, I can see our elephant. You're still using Hadoop as well, right? We also plan to bring Hadoop into Azure um, soon once we have re re rationalized all of our um, batch processes. What approach then did you take in terms of capacity management? Because I know that's that's different, I guess, when you're moving to the cloud versus some of the things that you might be doing with an appliance. The best part about the migration effort is the unlimited elasticity. We aren't turning away users or killing their query that is running uh, longer than five minutes. Azure Data Warehouse was uh, three times faster um, in terms of processing, and we can ramp up our um, Data Warehouse unit for um, compute if ever there is a need for it. Right. One of the cool things that, uh, that we can do now with modern data warehousing and the architecture in Azure is that it actually separates the compute layer for kind of the horsepower and the storage layer, so you can individually scale either of those. So I can show you if you want to see how easy it is to actually scale um, in, All right. in, in Azure. Yeah, let's take a look. So if you see on the screen, all you have to do is click on Scale. And on the right, you would see a slider. You can select whatever DW you need, and it will show you the associated cost. And you click on Scale. OK, so then in terms of automating some of these processes, how do you go about doing that so you don't have to always, as awesome as this scaler is or this slider is, how do we automate this process to make it even more automated? Good question, Jeremy. We actually um, created a way so that we can automate the scaling. OK, let's have a um, look. So in the screen, you guys can actually see our run books. Looks like that's the uh, data warehouse. So. It is. So let's go to the schedules. In here, you can see the schedule that we have for scaling at. Let's open one of the run books. Let's click on Edit so that you can see the, how we did it. So in here, you can see the code of a PowerShell script that we actually created so that we can define the variables on how we scale up and down. It's really simple. Right, it's really good. This is actually part of the Runbooks gallery, and it lets you kind of set the timings once you set the time schedule up. In your case, you can scale it up in the morning during kind of the work hours, scale it back down in the evening, and then turn it down on the weekends when people aren't coming into the office. So great for, for automation. But what differences then are you seeing in terms of supporting concurrent users? You mentioned before you had to terminate those five minute and longer queries. How is that now? So as I mentioned in the past, if we saw a query running longer than five minutes, we'd kill it and notify our business user. Okay. We had an agreement with the business that they cannot execute queries at times of day where our um, important batch processing is running. Now, because of workload management in Azure, we don't have constraint at all. I can show you. Let's run this query. Here you can see all of our users, about 70 of them, and about 20 is running longer than five minutes. And it's, yeah. it's fine. And, the, and the nice thing is you don't have to worry about terminating the queries. Again, you're not training kind of users to be afraid to ask you to run these kind of longer queries, which is going to help in terms of just decision making. But it's really great to see that those can continue to run. Were there any surprises, though, that you noticed as part of the move then to Azure SQL Data Warehouse? One big surprise is the operational cost. So everyone told us that while the upfront cost would be less in moving to the cloud, we would have higher ongoing costs. Um, as we found, even if you are depreciating an appliance over time, um, it is still more cost effective because we only pay for the compute and storage that we utilized. We've eliminated hardware maintenance and administrative overhead. And also, there are the performance benefits of um, modern um, infrastructure. 
we're running three times faster, and the cost is a third in terms of total cost of ownership. This is just, just amazing to think about it. You've got a depreciated asset for the most part, a lot of these. It's less expensive now that you're in Azure. It's faster, really pretty much upside on all, on all fronts. Really great results. So how did you end up then, uh, or how easy was it to kind of maintain the system for your team, given they were kind of new to the Azure SQL Data Warehouse? Basically, if you guys know traditional SQL, you will learn it. SQL is the lingua franca of analytics. In your lab, you will see a query in Netiza. And on the right, you will see a query in Azure SQL Data Warehouse. There are a few syntax differences, but it's largely the same. This served us really well because it reduced the time it took us to replatform. And we actually changed some of the queries too, which produced really optimal results for us. And one awesome resource as well, if you're um, adapting existing queries and scripts, the nice thing is you can actually contact Microsoft. And we can adapt sometimes hundreds or thousands of these using automation. Uh, so just work with your Microsoft Teams. What other benefits did we see then when moving to Azure SQL Data Warehouse? The other thing we can do now that we never able to do before is to spin up development and test environment as we add new features. We can have these environments run side by side because it's no longer cost prohibitive and we are not capacity constrained. Very cool. So it's not all that helped. I think in this case, you're moving a massive amount of data, 100 terabytes uncompressed. And that's all going into Azure SQL Data Warehouse while running the existing system in parallel, how did you pull off that massive move? How quickly we could migrate the data was largely a question of physics and our approach. We were able to migrate the data and replatform the batch processes with zero disruption to the productivity of our business users. What we did is we chose to do data sharding to carve out data into incremental chunks. We transported the data over express route from our data center in Illinois to Microsoft Data Center in North Central. Another important aspect of this was network management. We used a network management utility to do a VM to VM transfer inside the VNet and to throttle the amount of data that we transfer passing over Express Route. We got the data into Azure Blob Storage, as I've said earlier, using AZ Copy. And then we used Polybase to load the data from Azure Blob into SQL Data Warehouse. We basically run the Netiza in parallel with Azure SQL Data Warehouse until June 2019. And now we are totally operational in Azure SQL Data Warehouse. Awesome. So a really pragmatic and also incremental approach then to doing a live migration. But let's go back to compatibility. How was that in terms of compatibility with your existing systems? There was 95% compatibility with the exception of some um, complex um, syntax. Uh, and few queries, which we ended up rewriting to get some more optimization from them. OK, so beyond compatibility from an operational standpoint, did you have to plan for things like disaster recovery? That actually has been another awesome surprise for us. With the previous appliance solution, we would do data backup, but it would take about three to five days if something is to happen. Now, what we do if ever something is about to happen, all you have to do is click Restore, select a copy of the data that you want to restore, create an instance of Data Warehouse, and click on Review and Restore. Click on Restore. It will start initializing the deployment. It will deploy. Now it's in progress, and this will take minutes. Right, so it was kind of like three to five days. Now it's just a few minutes. Under 20 is what we say, but I think it's around five to 10 minutes, right? Yes. So super cool in terms of uh, being able to do the store much, much, much quicker than before. Um, so what's the future then look like from a supply chain analytics perspective then at Walgreens? I always feel like whatever we have accomplished right now is just foundational. I'm at the beginning of everything. The first move has been laid as a foundation for our business users to have all of the data that they need currently in our cloud platform. And the limitations are, are gone. Um, the future for us is really what we can do with our data that we are building a full analytics stack so that we can be more predictive to adhere to our customer needs. Um, this will improve our core goal of having the right inventory at the right quantities in each store. Thanks, Anne. Thanks for joining us today and, and really sharing your tips for making a pragmatic and incremental approach uh, for migrating to the cloud. Now, one thing to point out here 
is that the next evolution of Azure SQL Data Warehouse is Azure Synapse Analytics. You're going to want to check out more information on that. You can also check out on Walgreens specific migration at aka.ms slash Walgreens Azure to learn more about what Ann and team did and also at azure.com to check out any information around Azure Synapse Analytics. You'll find all of that there. So thanks everyone for watching. That's all the time we have from the Microsoft Mechanics live stage here in Orlando. Thank you and we'll see you next time. <laughs>